Hi friends, welcome to Born for Homeschool. If you're new here, my name is Rachel Bourne and my husband and I have four kiddos ages three through 10. And this year I'm homeschooling the oldest three. So I have a first grader, a third grader, and a sixth grader. And today I wanted to walk you through the curriculum and the schoolwork that we're doing this year for our sixth grader. So I just did a video where I shared what our 2022-2023 homeschool curriculum is for this current school year. And in the video, I shared what we were doing as far as curriculum wise and just gave a brief overview of our entire homeschool. So if you're interested in that, I will put a link in the description box below and you can check out the curriculum we're doing for all of our homeschool. But today I wanted to give you a little bit more of a detailed and closer look at what my sixth grader will be doing for her homeschool this year. So to start with this year, one of my big goals for my sixth grader was that she learned to be a little bit more independent for her school. And to help her in this and to just begin the process of turning a lot of the uh, logistical work over to her for her schooling. I purchased an academic planner for her, a 2022-2023 academic planner, and it starts in August and goes through July of next year. And the first few weeks were really just trying to figure out how we were going to use this planner and what made sense, what worked best, and how I would train her to use it. And so, you know, trial and error, here we go, <laughs> sort of thing. Kind of settled on the plan of, I'm going to write out the plan for her, for her schoolwork for the week. And then she can be responsible for marking through the boxes and keeping track of what she's doing and how she's doing it throughout the week. And then the plan is that I want to have a weekly meeting with her to go through anything that she wants to go through and related to school. And so I'm really excited about that um, this year. It's just meeting with her, touching base with her, and, and trying to really train her um, in the, the life skill and the character of uh, making a plan and then following through with it on your own accord. And so I've just filled in this coming school week what that will look like. The things that I'm expecting and the things that she can expect for the school day. So this is something new that we are starting with her this coming year. And I will let you know how it goes as we progress through the year. But it's something that we're both really excited about. So her first subject is math. And this year she's doing Saxon Math 7-6. And Last year, I shared with you how she started this math book and why we were slowing down and only doing half of a lesson and either the B um, recording form, B the lesson worksheet or the fact sheet, depending on which day it was. So I'll put a link in the description if you wanna check out that video and um, see how we did things differently last year. But there were a couple of things that I decided at the end of last school year that I wanted to change. And one of them was I, I wanted her to do a complete lesson again um, in a school day. And I was noticing that even though I had kind of split the workload in half for last year, she was still taking almost as long, not quite, but almost as long time-wise to do half of the work that she had done the previous year. And so I was a little concerned with that. And also as she was working through the problems, I noticed that she was, she was having a really difficult time recalling basic facts, like the multiplication facts or the subtraction facts. It wasn't a, a quick thing. Even though she was doing the fact sheets every other day, she still um, was not quickly recalling these basic math facts. And so I knew that that played a role in how long it was taking her to do her math, but it also played a role in the fact that she was getting these problems incorrect because she was making simple mistakes on the actual facts of multiplication or division or whatever. So we are speeding back up. She's doing an entire lesson. She's reading the lesson for the day. Then she works through recording form B, which is 
the lesson worksheet. She does mental math and then a problem solving problem. And then she works through the concept that is taught for that day. And, you know, has the mastery of that is on this worksheet. And then she works through recording form C, which is all the mixed pra practice problems, which is the, the spiral coming back through and reviewing a lot of the concepts throughout the entire curriculum. And so she is taking about 30 minutes to 45 or 50 minutes to do a math lesson, which is about the amount of time that she was taking. It's, I don't know, five or 10 minutes longer than she was taking last year to do half of the work. And so um, we'll continue through this and see how this goes this year. But um, that is what she's doing so far. She's doing really well. She's grasping all the concepts. She is getting much quicker at just the basic facts, uh, remembering and recalling the um, multiplication and division and um, addition, subtraction back. So that's really exciting. And we're just continuing to move along with that this year. So next is her spelling. And she is doing Evan Moore Spelling Skills 6 for this year. And last year she did Evan Moore Spelling Skills 5. She really enjoyed it. She did really well. And we're just continuing on with this for the coming year. She, there are a lot of games and crossword puzzles and things like that, which she really, really enjoys. And so it's a really fun way for her to get her spelling in for homeschool. Next is writing. This year, she's working through the ancient history-based writing lessons. Now she has been doing the Institute for Excellence in Writing, the IEW writing for, um, this will be her fourth year now. And so every year we've done some sort of this curriculum. So she's very familiar with the format and she's able to do a lot of it on her own. Last year, she watched a lot of the videos from the level 1A and was taught through those videos. The teaching was done by Andrew Pudua. So right now we're not doing any of the DVD lessons. We're simply working through the workbook for the ancient history-based writing lessons. And she is doing really well. She's um, growing and being challenged and yet is doing well at the assignments. So next is grammar. And the grammar that she is finishing up this year is First Language Lessons for the Well-Trained Mind by Jesse Weiss and Sarah Buffington. And this is an excellent, excellent grammar curriculum. And this is the last level, level four of this specific curriculum. After this, it moves on to a different, um, pretty much the same information, just a little bit different format. And so we will probably move on to that next year. Probably, we'll see. <laughs> it's always subject to change. But um, so right now she's working, I mean, this, this next lesson that she's gonna be doing, lesson 54 is she's reviewing the four kinds of verbs. She'll review a direct object and indirect objects. And she will also um, review predicate nominatives and predicate adjectives. And she will be, um, diagramming as she's doing a lot of the review work for her next lesson. So that's kind of where we are as far as grammar and learning for this coming school year. Next, I wanted to share with you what she's doing as far as history. It's She's doing history with the rest of the family and she's doing the Mystery of History Volume 1. We started this last year and didn't get super far, and so we're finishing it up this year. This is such a wonderful history curriculum. It's The stories are amazing. It's it's so well written. And um, what, how we do the lesson is either I will read the lesson for History for the Day, or we will listen to the audio um, CD of it and we will follow along in the textbook. The pictures in the textbook are just beautiful. It's full color and a lot of them are very classic art and so it's just a beautiful you know maps and all sorts of information and in a very compelling way the history is told through Mystery of History and so it I just highly recommend it. So we listen to the lesson or I read it and then 
the girls um, write a summary for the lesson. And so Christiana will come up with her own summary. Usually it's one paragraph long, um, pretty much on her own accord. It's one paragraph long. I don't, I don't have a specific length that she needs to make it. It's just a summary, the things that she wants to remember from, or the things that she thinks are important from the history lesson for the day. And then we also color in the timeline figure for that lesson and that's it. That's all we're doing in history for this year for now. So next I wanna share with you the science that Christiane is doing this year. It's Exploring Creation with Human Anatomy and Physiology. This is by Apologia and it's the science that we started, it's the science curriculum that we started last year. It's beautiful. It's so well written. It is engaging and interesting. It is so informative. Um, we have really, really enjoyed this and learned so much from it. It is a curriculum that I read to all of the kids and then they can do activities or they can participate according to their age level and according to their understanding. And so it's a wonderful, wonderful science curriculum. So the girls have each have their own um, science notebook to go with the lessons. And so there's all sorts of copy work and um, coloring pages, questions, quizzes, uh, just places to keep track of the things that you're learning. So this is a wonderful addition to that science curriculum. It's definitely not needed, but it, it's a, a really good fit for our family. So next I wanna share with you about torch lighters, which is something that I mentioned in the video where I shared about all of our curriculum this year. And the torch lighters um, is a Bible curriculum that I'm using along with just reading chapters from the Bible to the kids all together. We're reading them together. This is the uh, way that I wanted to share with my kids the stories of heroes of the faith. And so this year we're doing torch lighters. We have each one of the kids has their own activity book. And right now we're studying the first one who is Jim Elliot. And then we will work through many other heroes of the faith, William Tyndale, John Bunyan, Eric Liddell, Gladys Allward, Richard Warmbrand, many, many others. Um, it's just a really fun and wonderful way to share these stories with my children and to meet these incredible people. So I'm really excited about the torch lighters that we are all doing together this year. And then next we have something that I called introduction to beauty. And it's something that it's just a time where we talk about manners and we're using connoisseur kids. Uh, usually just one page or whatever the section is for that day. Um, we're just working through this. And we also have uh, poetry and we're reading through Shades of Green. And I usually don't read through the poetry book. I just pick different poems that I want to read for the day. So that's what we're doing for that. And then also we have um, hymns that we're learning and scripture that we're learning together. And all of that is part of our introduction to beauty, which is a time that we're just gathering together to um, do these uh, subjects together, these smaller things. Um, so a, a hymn study and then uh, whatever scripture or memorization that we have, um, we'll work on that together. So that is the bulk of the curriculum for my sixth grader. Now, some of the things that are not a curriculum per se, are things like going to the library and just learning about certain topics. Either I will choose books about certain things that that the girls or Christiana specifically is interested in, or they will choose something and um, get books about the information and then read them together or read them separately and then discuss them together. So that is something I think that will happen a lot here in sixth grade but also things that are not part of a curriculum are things like our homeschool meetup where we just meet together with other homeschool families twice a month. And we also have a homeschool co-op that we are a part of. So Christiana in sixth grade is doing 
art and sign language. She's doing drama and PE and co-op every week. And so that's another part of her sixth grade year. And then a few other things that we are doing that is kind of above and beyond or enrichment for our homeschool this year is she is really interested in drama. And so she is part of a local drama group that is putting on a play um, for Christmas. And so she's really excited and really involved in that. And then also she's involved in a um, choir and bells group at our church, the children's choir and bells group. And then she also does a local girls club that she's a part of. And so, and those are weekly commitments and just things that she's really interested in. So that is pretty much Christiana's sixth grade year for homeschooling. So if you have any specific questions, be sure to leave them in the comment section below. I would be happy to answer any questions or give more details on something that you're interested in. And otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I will see you again in my next video.